Today, I'm diving into the world of finance, which is kind of a play on words here because I'm talking about finance as in lending money. I'm gonna be talking about a concept that has changed the way that people borrow and lend money, and it's known as peer-to-peer -peer lending. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the ins and outs of what it is, talk a bit about its history, its benefits and risks, and that's pretty much everything that I think I'll need to cover. So let's get started. Peer-to-peer -peer lending, often abbreviated as P2P lending, is a financial innovation which essentially connects borrowers directly into lenders through online platforms, bypassing traditional financial institutions such as banks. The concept first gained momentum in the early 2000s with the launch of a platform called Zopa or Zopa, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, from the UK. And then shortly after, a company in the US launched a product called Prosper. Since then, peer-to-peer -peer lending has seen some significant growth and become an actual viable alternative to traditional lending practices. On these online platforms, people or businesses looking to borrow money or take out a loan can basically create and submit an application and submit it to these platforms. Then lenders who are on these platforms looking to invest their money can actually review these applications and decide whether or not they want to invest with these specific people or businesses based on their credit worthiness and their risk appetite. And then the way that interest rates are assigned to these types of loans is that, and I'll be very general and summarized here, it's not overly specific, but peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms generally have some type of algorithm where they can assess individual's credit worthiness and basically that will determine how they get to the said interest rate that is going to be agreed upon between the lenders and the borrowers. And the intent of doing this is to both mitigate risk as well as ensure fair borrowing conditions for both parties. Then once the loan is approved, the borrower gets the funds and has to pay back the loan in installments. Generally, let's say for simplicity's sake, again, it would be monthly similar to what you might see when repaying a mortgage. And that's the basics. So with that out of the way, let's move on to talk about its key benefits. Firstly, peer-to-peer -peer lending offers an alternative to the traditional banking system, which can be a bonus for someone who may not meet the stringent requirements required to take out a loan. These platforms provide provide greater accessibility to loans, which means borrowers have more options and flexibility, which personally, I don't think that necessarily is a good thing, but I digress, I'm not gonna dive into the weeds of that in this video. Secondly, in some circumstances, peer-to-peer -peer lending can result in lower interest rates than going through traditional services. Technically, they have lower overhead costs and streamlined operations, which means that the savings can be passed on to the borrower, which is a win-win for both the lender and the borrower because the lender still is making money and the borrower pays less than what they traditionally would through a banking system. And then thirdly, which is kind of the inverse to the borrowing component, it's the investing component. People with surpluses of cash have the ability to put their money into something that they might believe in that could give them significant returns over a long period of time or a short period of time either, depending again on that risk appetite. They have the ability to review all of these cases and determine which ones they want to put their money into, which gives them again more flexibility with what to do with their money. And I'll throw this one liner in there to wrap up the benefits. It also allows investors to support entrepreneurship as well as small economic growth through local businesses, depending again on where they're investing, which is kind of a positive in lots of different ways. Now for the juicy stuff. So yes, Peer-to-peer -peer lending has some advantages and we've recognized them, but they also have some negatives, I'll say in quotations, or some things that should definitely be considered before even looking down this avenue, whether you're a borrower or an investor. One of the major potential risks, and I guess this is the same with any type of financial institution, but again, peer-to-peer -peer lending has less stringent requirements to gain access to loans, is the borrowers defaulting on their loans. And this means that there could be losses for the lenders, even though there are mechanisms in place to recuperate those losses, it is a massive risk. As a one-liner, no one likes to lose money. So this is something that should absolutely be considered by anyone who's looking at investing their money through one of these ventures. Another challenge is the lack of regulation and oversight within the peer-to-peer -peer lending industry compared to other traditional lending operations. And Again, you know what they are, banks generally being the most common and prevalent in this example, which can essentially expose both lenders and borrowers to things like fraud, unethical practices, and inadequate consumer protections. Protections is a key word there. 
they're basically at risk all the time. On top of this as well, depending on what's going on within the economy and fluctuations and things like that, peer-to-peer -peer lending is definitely susceptible to economic downturn, which definitely can affect how money flows in and out when people are investing. This also can drive defaults up where recessions are really good examples of where people and money kind of gets tight. And it's where things like this are probably the first ones to go where people aren't going to pay those loans first before paying their mortgage. Mortgage definitely comes number one. If you lose your roof, that's a concern. If you lose your little side hustle that you had a loan for through a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, there's gonna take time for them to recuperate those losses. These are things where peer-to-peer -peer lending is very risky. That's kind of the cons out of the way. Let's look ahead. Peer-to-peer -peer lending, simply put, really is showing some potential for future growth and evolution. And I think you can probably see where I'm going here, moving into the space to talk quickly about cryptocurrency. As technology continues to advance, peer-to-peer to peer lending theoretically should evolve to become a more common way people transact and use their money in terms of borrowing and lending. I mentioned cryptocurrency for a reason. Essentially, blockchain technology and smart contracts are two very simple examples that are being used right now. And I would still say that the development of them is still in their infancy. The point being that it's absolutely a really good example of the way that peer-to-peer -peer lending will continue to grow and evolve over time. And I've actually talked about this quite a lot on the channel before. If you're interested in learning more about it, go check out my cryptocurrency playlist on the channel. I think there are some watches in there that definitely would teach you more about this concept and why it's important to understand now so that if opportunities arise in the future, you might be in a position to capitalize on them. Decentralized lending essentially is peer-to-peer -peer lending and cryptocurrency is all about it. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to dive too deep into it. Just understand the concept that I'm talking about today. That's an old method. The 2000s was a long time ago. I feel old for saying that out loud. But the evolution that we've seen so far to get to where we are today is still in its infancy. We will most likely see this get adopted and it will transform over time into a place where it's a really great mechanism for people to both make money and take on loans that is in the format of good debt with the opportunity to make money from those loans. As a one-liner, peer-to-peer lending has emerged as a promising alternative to traditional banking systems and it's something that is still growing in popularity today and being refined for the future. By using online platforms and future methods that are coming into play right now, people can connect directly with each other bypassing those traditional banks and financial lending systems which essentially puts more money in their pocket, both being the investors and the borrowers. It's a better solution when you cut out the middleman and everything works as it should. It has the power to democratize the lending process, empowering individuals and promoting healthy financial practices. For now, as my disclaimer, it is still very important to understand the risks associated with it as it's not a perfect system and realistically, it probably never will be. That's my disclaimer make sure you understand any risks before getting involved or signing anything. Overall, in my opinion, this innovative approach to lending definitely has the potential to reshape the financial landscape. As someone who is paying down a debt to a bank in the form of a mortgage, definitely if I could get a more competitive rate as someone who definitely pays my bills and pays my mortgage on time, I would definitely explore those avenues because to me personally, paying interest to a bank isn't great. Paying fees to a bank isn't great. The opportunity that came from taking that debt on is great, but there are definitely drawbacks when you have to go through a middleman because it's the only place that you can borrow money from. That's basically where I'm going to leave it today. That's peer-to-peer -to -peer lending in a nutshell. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. If you learned something, I think it deserves it. So, you know, smack, 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 hit it a couple of times. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave you. So have a good day, have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.